I'm from the future. I'm here to retrieve the coupon code for creativegalaxy.com. What? No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. No. Yes. Damn it. Okay, I can give you a coupon code. Just use a coupon code Terminator and you'll get 10% off. This video is made possible by Elgato. Hey what's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Ines Alea and welcome to the CraterGalaxy.com space station. Here in space we are experimenting with intergalactic filmmaking skills and visual effects. If you're interested in our upcoming videos be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay notified when I upload new videos. Alright so in today's video I will be showing you how to recreate the Terminator teleport effect which is super famous for years now but after seeing the new trailer for Terminator Dark Fate I was so stoked to see the teleportation effect that I wanted to recreate it myself. And also after working together with Adobe all around the Terminator create your fate challenge uh, which was an awesome contest that you could join if you uh, had the chance to join I wish you the best of luck just being all surrounded by Terminator I just had to make an effect uh, on the movie so if you want to follow along with this tutorial using the exact same footage as me I will put a link in the description below where you can download my project file so we can get started together using the same footage as you can see I did a little sky replacement in my video as the original sky was white and boring and it also didn't transform well into a night scene anyway I'm not going over that in this video I already have a sky replacement tutorial if you want to go and check that out I have a card in this video and also with the link in the description below also for the day to night scene I also already have a tutorial on that so I didn't want to lose time on that in this video as I already covered that entire thing and I just wanted to concentrate on the teleportation effect itself because that on its own it's already a handful before we start this video I quickly want to introduce you to the Elgato stream deck it's one of the coolest things that I have gotten for a while to improve my workstation and the funny thing is that I didn't even realize that I wanted it or needed it but it just improved my productivity. The name says it itself, it's targeted for streamers but the functionality really surprised me. The stream deck comes with endless possibilities when it comes down to configuration. You can use it as a streamer, a video editor, a photographer, whatever you do on a computer, uh, it's possible that you could use this Elgato Stream Deck. You can assign each button of the Stream Deck to whatever you need it to do. It might be to open up a software or to use it as a hotkey to save your projects, start recording a tutorial, um, or open a specific website like Twitter or more complicated stuff while streaming and putting some animations on the screen or playing a sound effect when you're kind of switching scenes. Uh, you can all do this live with the Stream Deck or just use it for the functions which for me is more useful. I don't stream so I use it for just day-to-day -day, uh, productivity stuff. And the coolest thing is that you can actually see the icons of what is assigned to the button in an ultra crisp manner. Alright so back to the tutorial, let's create a new composition, just keep the full HD settings and rename it to teleport effect. In this composition we'll create a new solid layer and apply the famous fractal noise effect, which I so love. Adjust the settings a little bit and change the fractal type to a dynamic progressive. Keep the contrast low and then next add a CC vector blur and increase it a little bit. Then I'm going to add a motion tiles effect and bring it above the vector blur, check mirror edges and increase the output width and height a little bit so we remove those edges. Now I want to animate this look a little bit so I'll alt click on the stopwatch for the evolution of the fractal noise effect and type time times 100. Then head into the transform settings and animate the offset turbulence however you like over time by keyframing it at the beginning and the end of your composition. Then duplicate this layer and play with the transform scale and once you're satisfied you can also change this layer's blending mode to a screen or a lighten and adjust the time evolution expression a little bit to create a variation layer on top of it if you're into that to give it a little bit more detail. You can keep repeating this process as many times as you want uh, to really make it complex. Next go back to your original composition and bring in that composition that we just created. Add a CC sphere effect and increase the radius to your preferences. Then alt click on the rotation Y and also add a time expression. Same for the X just to get some animation going.
Next, head over to the shading tab and increase the ambient to 100 and the diffuse to 0. The specular will set to 0 and just play around with the settings until you like it. Next, change the blending mode to screen for this layer and now we'll add a CC class effect. This is going to add a little bit of a liquid look to our entire sphere, which is what I'm going for. And play around with the settings, I found myself lowering the softness, changing the light direction and height. And then next I'm going to add a turbulence displacement effect and then lower the size quite a lot and also animate the evolution by alt clicking on the stopwatch and writing the time expression. Then I'll pre-compose the entire sphere effect and move all the attributes into the new composition. Change the blending mode again to screen and then mask out the bottom part then set it to subtract and feather it a little bit so it looks like it's sitting on the floor. Next duplicate the bulk composition and change blending mode to normal and make sure that it sits behind the original ball. Make it a little bit smaller and lower its opacity, this is to make the ball more visible. Add a tint effect to this ball and change both colors to a variation of blue. Next for the first top ball add the Video Copilot VC Color Vibrance effect which is a free plugin from Video Copilot. Uh, I will put a link in the description below so you can go ahead and download that if you haven't already. It's completely for free and it's super powerful, I use it tons of times so you'll find yourself using it in different projects as well. Now change the vibrance color to blue and play around with the settings a little bit. I'm also going to add a channel blur effect to blur the alpha a bit. So the edges of the ball become a little bit softer and we kind of integrate it a little bit more into our scene. Just make sure that you put the effect before all the other effects. And then next apply the perfect glow preset which you can also find on our website for free. It's a really cool preset for glows, it really just kind of pops your glows and just look a lot better than the original glow that comes within Adobe After Effects. I will also put a link in the description below. Play around with the settings until you have some kind of nice glows and then add another CC vector blur on the entire effect and then also put it above everything. Increase it a little bit and that will make everything look a little bit more liquidy so that's exactly what we're going for, that kind of water type look and by applying the CC vector blur you kind of get those wavy kind of liquid form shapes, whatever, um, but it looks cool and that's most important. Now duplicate the sphere layer and bring it on top. Delete the perfect glow, the color vibrance and the solid composite effect. Now mask out the center of the sphere. We're going to feather the edges a little bit to give it that Fresnel look, which is very famous if you're familiar with 3D software, uh, where the edges are a little bit more reflective than in the center, for example. That's a Fresnel kind of look. And that's just to make it look more realistic, create more depth. Change the blending mode to add and play with the feather and expansion until you're happy. You can always duplicate this layer again and now feather it less so you have a better transition. Alright, so that should be the spherical effect. Now we want to bring in some life. Bringing life into digital created things, um, if you want to make it realistic, it's super good to kind of combine it with real stock footage. And if you combine digital made with real assets, it just becomes a lot more realistic in general. You can of course skip this part and try to make your own smoke and Adobe After Effects. Um, but I just find working with real stock footage works a lot better. And I'm going for Action VFX for this because they have the absolute best assets for anything that is related to smoke, explosions, sparks, whatever, muzzle flashes. Uh, they have Hollywood grade quality and for their prices you're not gonna find any competitor that does it better and yeah you can also see that because their assets actually get used in real movies and real series so they're doing a great job and yeah everything is super high quality recorded with the best cameras 
Uh, so definitely go and check them out. I will put a link in the description below. And also the founder of Action VFX is a good friend of mine. Uh, we go way, way back, many years from now, uh, but definitely give them a look. I will put a link in the description below where you can go and check them out. I'll bring in some small dust explosions so it looks like the sphere is very powerful. What we also did to make it look powerful was on the moment that we recorded this, we used a leaf blower to really add that kind of powerfulness by throwing the leaves all around the scene. And that just makes it look a lot more realistic using practical effects in there. Um, just makes it a lot better. Next, I'll add in some falling sparks and I will invert it. And then I'm going to invert it on the hue. Then I'm going to add a hue and saturation effect and offset it the hue until you get a matching color. The reason why I did that is because orange, uh, the complementary color of orange is blue. Uh, so if you're going to invert it, it's going to give better results than if you start with hue uh, from the start, it's going to do weird stuff. Um, so you have to invert it first on the hue and then you have to offset just a little bit with the hue and saturation uh, to get the colors matching. And I'm, I want some kind of blue color then I'm going to add the solid composite effect again and make it black. I'm also going to add the perfect glow here and then change the blending mode to screen. Reposition it and voila. Now let's bring in some reflection as this ball definitely should emit some light. If you would have a glowing ball in the middle of the forest, of course it would reflect on the trees, on the floor. So try thinking of that. Uh, if you have lights on the set that you can actually use, that would definitely be better. But in this case, we're going to fake it. So I'm going to duplicate our original layer and then add the exposure effect. Alt click on the exposure and write wiggle open parentheses 10 comma. I started off with one, but I'm going to set it to two because I know I'm going to change it over time. And then I'm going to close uh, the parentheses. So wiggle open parentheses 10 comma two, close the parentheses and then change the original exposure value to zero. So there is a lot more variation going on. It starts, uh, it starts off darker and just fluctuates uh, in between those. And it's going to give that kind of really powerful reflection look. So then I'm going to add a curves effect and I'll jump into the blue channel, increase that and decrease the red channel to give it a more matching color to my sphere. Then I'm going to mask out the areas that should have the light reflection. So things that are close walls, but not in the far distance, not the sky, because that's not going to reach that far. Of course, you can work with flares on your lens. That's also something you could do. You have to really think what would happen in real life and how would my camera interact with that thing in real life. Uh, so you can go as crazy as you want, basically. So I'm going to mask everything out, feather it a little bit, and then duplicate this layer and delete the mask. And now create a simple mask just around the sphere a little bit, and then feather it also. And that's going to give that kind of gradient emission zone. It's going to be more intense around the sphere and then kind of a little bit lesser intense uh, in the entire area, which is kind of normal. Now we're going to add in some displacement mapping. So duplicate the sphere layer and remove all the effects to have a black and white sphere effect. Add the solid composite effect and make this color perfectly gray this time. So perfectly 50% gray. Pre-compose this and now we will disable this displacement map layer and then create a new adjustment layer and add the displacement map effect. Choose the displacement map layer that we just pre-composed and play with the horizontal and vertical displacement. Now let's trim our entire effect to where we want the animation to stop. And then next, let's take a look on the lightning effects. I'm just gonna be doing a few as it's basically repeating the same process again and again and again as many times as you want. So what I have done is add the advanced lightning effect to a solid. So there we go. And then we also went into the glow settings and changed the glow opacity to zero. The core setting, you can change that to six or seven and then lower the forking and then again add a solid composite effect. Make it black and then add the perfect glow again. And then you can also change the core color to a bluish color and that's also going to affect our glows and make it a little bit more uh, of a bluish kind of lightning effect. Change the blending mode to screen and we'll have something like this. Now create a new solid layer and apply the optical flares effect. 
use a simple glow element like this one uh, to add the highlights of impact for the lightning. So I'm going to position uh, the first optical flare on one end of the lightning and the second flare on the second end of the lightning. And then I'm going to trim these three layers. So we have the lightning, we have one optical flare and another optical flare, trim those layers to one frame. And then I'm going to duplicate these three layers and then just offset them, change the lightning direction, put it in a different position and kind of play around with it and repeat the process until you're satisfied basically. Next, just before this effect is going to stop, we're going to add a lot more lightning effects. Then over two frames, we're going to increase the optical flare intensity to cover the entire screen. That way we can use that as a transition to our teleportation effect being gone. I'm also going to add in a shockwave effect from Video Copilot to finish off my effect. You don't have to take the step, but I have shockwave lying around for many years now and I still use it to this day, but it was so close to the actual look of the movie that I wanted to use this. So I'm going to just trim it quite a bit and apply the VC color vibrance effect to it, give it some color. I'm also going to add the perfect glow effect to it and also lower the entire clip's opacity to make it a little bit more subtle. And now you should have something like this. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a like. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel for more and hit the notification bell to stay notified when I upload new videos. And apart from that, I hope to see you boys and girls in the next one. Take care and goodbye.